Cellular interactions start at the cell membrane. Recall that the cell membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer interspersed with proteins. The primary function of the plasma membrane is to create an environment inside the cell that is different from the conditions outside. The selective permeability of the membrane controls the flow of materials into and out of the cell. Most cells possess a protective layer or wall that forms just beyond the membrane. This layer generally consists of a fiber composite, a cross-linked network of long filaments surrounded by a stiff ground substance. The function of this layer is to provide rigidity and strength to the cell. The rods or filaments protect against tension and the ground substance protects against compression. Tension is force or pressure from pulling something apart, whereas compression is force or pressure from pushing things together. When new plant cells form, they secrete a fiber composite called a primary cell wall. This wall is composed of long strands of cellulose bunded into microfibrils that form a crisscrossed network. The network is filled with hydrophilic gelatinous polysaccharides known as pectin, which keep the cell wall moist. You may know pectin as the things that makes jelly gelatinous. The primary cell wall defines the shape of the plant cell and counteracts the turgor pressure it experiences. Turgor pressure pushes the plasma membrane against the cell wall of the plant. This pressure, called turgidity, is caused by the flow of water from an area of low solute concentration outside of the cell into the cell's vacuole, which has a higher solute concentration. Healthy plant cells are turgid, and plants rely on turgidity to maintain a rigid structure. This is what allows them to grow upright. In contrast, this phenomenon is not observed in animal cells, which have no cell walls to prevent them from being burst by the flow of water into the cell and thus either be continually pumping out water from their cells or cease to exist. The secondary cell wall is a structure found in many plant cells. It's located between the primary cell wall and the plasma membrane. The cell starts producing the secondary cell wall after the primary cell wall is complete and the cell has stopped expanding. The secondary cell wall consists mainly of cellulose, but also has other polysaccharides, lignin, and glycoproteins. It sometimes consists of three distinct layers where the direction of the cellulose microfibrils differs between the layers. Most animal cells secrete a fiber composite called the extracellular matrix, also known as the ECM. Like extracellular materials found in other organisms, one of the ECM's most important functions is structural support. The amount and composition of the ECM vary depending on the cell type. The ECM consists of a ground substance formed of a gelatinous polysaccharide and a network of protein fibers. The most common ECM protein fiber is collagen, which is more elastic than cellulose and forms a flexible extracellular layer. In addition to structural support, the ECM also helps cells stick together and forms protein-protein attachment that link the ECM directly to the cell's cytoskeleton. The extracellular matrix is strengthened by connections to transmembrane proteins. These are proteins between two different cells. Actin protein filaments in the cytoskeleton bind to transmembrane integrin proteins, and then these integrin proteins bind to ECM proteins such as fibronectins, which then bind to collagen. Take a look at the picture. A direct linkage between the cytoskeleton and ECM keeps individual cells in place and helps adjacent cells adhere to each other. This is how cells stay connected to each other and is one of the most important evolutionary advancements in the history of life on Earth. Why, you might wonder? Without cells being able to connect to each other physically, multicellularity would have never been possible, and life would still look a lot like soup. The extracellular space between adjacent plant cells comprises three layers, the primary cell wall, the secondary cell wall, and the middle lamella. Plant cells are glued together by the middle lamella which is continuous with the adjacent plant cell's primary cell walls. The middle lamella is comprised of gelatinous pectins. 
Remember, pectins is what we use to make jellies with. So in essence, jelly binds the cell walls of plants in order to hold it together. A middle lamella-like layer made of gelatinous polysaccharides exists between cells of many animal tissues. The polysaccharide glue may be reinforced by cable-like proteins that span the ECM to connect adjacent cells. And this is really important in epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are composed of sheets of cells that covers organs and line body cavities. Many types of structures connecting neighboring epithelial cells include tight junctions and desmosomes. Now we're going to talk about these two things in the next couple slides. Tight junctions are composed of specialized proteins in the plasma membrane of adjacent animal cells. These proteins line up and bind with each other stitching the two cells together to form a watertight seal between the two plasma membranes. Tight junctions are usually found between cells and tissues that form a barrier, such as the tissue lining the stomach or the bladder, where you wouldn't want water to go from one place to another. Ew. Desmosomes are cell structures specialized for cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. A type of junctional complex, they are localized spot-like adhesion randomly arranged on the lateral sides of plasma membranes. Desmosomes help to resist shearing forces that are found in epithelial cells. Desmosomes are also found in muscle tissue where they bind muscle cells together. Direct connections between cells in the same tissue allow cells to communicate and work together in a coordinated fashion. Plant cells are connected by plasmodesmata. These are gaps in the cell wall where the plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and smooth ER of two cells connect. These connections enable transport and communication between those cells. Plasmodesmata are formed when portions of the endoplasmic reticulum are trapped across the middle lamella as new cell walls lay down between two newly divided plant cells. And these eventually become connections between cells. Here the wall is not thickened further, and depressions or thin areas known as pits are formed in these walls. Pits normally pair up between adjacent cells. Plasmodesmata have been shown to be important in transporting proteins, in transporting messenger RNA, and viral genomes from cell to cell. A gap junction is a specialized intercellular connection between many different types of animal cells. Intercellular proteins directly connect the cytoplasm of two cells, which allows various molecules and ions to pass freely between these different cells. Gap junctions allow for chemical communication between cells and animals. They are particularly important in the cardiac muscle. The signal to contract is passed efficiently through gap junctions, allowing the heart muscles to contract and expand in tandem. Gap junctions are expressed in virtually all tissues of the body. In addition to chemical communication, gap junctions also allow for direct electrical communication between neuron cells. This is what is known as an electrical synapse. This is a mechanical and electrically conductive link between two abutting cells. Electrical synapses are often found in neural systems that require the fastest possible response, such as defensive reflexes. An important characteristic of electrical synapses is that most of the time they are bidirectional meaning that they allow impulse transmission in either directions. In other words, your nerves talk to your brain and your brain talks to your nerves. Chemical communication in these types of cells only happen in one direction. Here's an overview of all the cell-to-cell -cell interactions we discussed in this lecture. The middle lamella and the extracellular matrix provide the structural support and bind adjacent cells together. Tight junctions form watertight barriers between cells, especially important in tissues that are barriers between organs. Desmosomes are proteins that serve as anchoring points locking cells in specific orientations. And the plasmodesmata in plants and gap junctions in animals allow adjacent cells to communicate. 